but what usually follows is some Whoa. type of elbow or some type of punch or another tool. Welcome to Blade HQ, everybody. I'm George, part of the marketing department here, and I'm not sitting down with Spencer today. Spencer's out marketing or something. We hope he's doing well. I'm sitting down with Kevin Estella. You might've seen him before. He was on our video, we were talking about reef knives and they were batoning through car doors and hoods and stuff. Looks like a lot of fun. I wish I could have been there. Anyway, he is an instructor for the Fieldcraft Survival and he is also an author. So he's written blogs for Black Rifle Coffee, for Recoil, for Outdoor Life, and best of all, for Blade HQ. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about one of the blogs that he wrote for us about his I would say a typical take for everyday carry, at least in our circles. Thanks for being with us, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me. So Kevin, you're a survival instructor. Correct. And most of the time in everyday carry circles, especially around here, that we have these beautiful flat lays with color coordination and they're, they're almost symmetry. Joy. Symmetry. Right. The, the rule of thirds, mm. very photography centric. But I'm looking at your flat lay over here and it's not <laughs> ugly, but Oh, it's pretty janky. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> so why, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So, so everyday carry, it, listen, everyone's got their own. And I think that's really the overarching message for today is the whole idea is you want to make sure that your everyday carry fits your needs, not necessarily mine. What is going to make sense for both possibility and probability in the world that you live in? Now, as a guy who spends a lot of time in the great outdoors, I am going to address my everyday carry around the rule of threes. And that is you need oxygenated blood running through your body. Uh, so three minutes without oxygenated blood, that's a problem. You need to have uh, protection from the environment so you can live about three hours exposed to the environment without adequate shelter. You can live about three days without water and about three weeks without food. I also am going to focus on the tools that make my life a lot easier as an outdoorsman. And that's gonna be very heavy with blades. That's gonna be very heavy with fire starting. So if you happen to notice multiple fire starters in my video, it's not because I'm a pyro, it's because I know the value of being able to make a fire right now. In fact, I wanna make a fire like five minutes ago. So that's why I carry multiple fire starters. Will she have the power to survive? And I imagine as a survival instructor, you're starting a lot more fires than the average person is. <laughs> than the average person, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, when I teach a class, I usually will use just what I have on my person. I don't like to bring out a whole box of goodies, although I will show a whole lot, but people always say, well, how would you do it? What would you use? And they're surprised when I actually pull out tools that look like they have been used, unlike a lot of the stuff that we see in these flat lay perfect photos where the fire starter has not a single scrape on it, the knives have no scratches on them, and everything looks like it came just right out of a box. So I think that's one of the important things with EDC is that you actually are practicing with the tools that you carry to make sure that they actually work when you need them to. Yeah, so I guess to that I might ask, what are your thoughts on like a knife rotation? I have this big set of knives and I carry them all once a month. <laughs> I have no problem with a knife rotation. I am more concerned with consistency and how you carry it and where you carry it. And that's really the premise of the blog that I wrote for you guys and yeah. that you want to be consistent with where you carry certain items. So that way there's never any wasted time in accessing those items because God forbid you need to pull your knife for whatever reason, for survival purposes, defensive purposes or whatever, you don't want to be reaching around looking for it. It should be in the same spot every single time. Okay. So where do you carry your knife? What's your system? <laughs> you said knife as in one. I'm <laughs> half Filipino, bro. We all know that feeling. So, uh, so here's, here's what I usually carry. In the right front pocket, I always have my Victorinox Swiss Army knife. And ever since I was a little kid, I carried a Swiss Army knife. It usually was the Huntsman, but as I got older, as I got bigger, I preferred the Ranger because it just fits my hand better when I'm carving. And it has enough tools that uh, I can rely on certain ones more than more than most in the, the great outdoors, like the wood saw, the scissors, the metal saw. Um, you know, it doesn't get a lot of play, but it is handy for when I'm fishing to actually uh, sharpen fish hooks uh, with that. Mm -hmm. So Swiss Army knife is always in the right front pocket. It's carried inside. This is actually the prototype of the Daily Duo. Yeah, which we've is, seen these come in. I think these are sweet. Yeah, so so mine's a little bit beaten up because like I said, I, I actually use my stuff and I think there's something pretty to, to gear that's got some character like this one. Yeah, this one's fresh out of the warehouse. Yeah, fresh out of the warehouse. <laughs> uh, this 
really was so I could carry a knife and a fire starter every single day. If I just grab this one item, I have a fire starting device and I have a cutting tool and I can throw that in the right front pocket. Um, this daily duo is now produced by uh, Jay over at Yellow Birch Outfitters. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this, and I'm terrible when it comes to marketing, this one, every time that someone buys one of these, Yellow Birch Outfitters makes a donation to my charity fund in my hometown that supports youth education. So it is a shameless plug, but I have no problem plugging that because they're the next generation. The wilderness must be explored! Go, go! Run! No! Yeah, well, you used to be a history teacher, right? That's true. You have great investment in education. And that's I, awesome that you've kind of put your design and your mentality towards it as well. Yeah, and I'm, I appreciate when people carry gear that I designed, and I, I love it when someone shows up and they say, hey, I've got one just like that, and it turns out that it's it's one of my designs. So mm -hmm. this, uh, this secondary portion or secondary part to the Daily Duo, this is the Exotac Fire Rod. Um, I carry one just like this one, except mine's a little bit beaten up. Uh, this fire rod's really cool because it has a secondary compartment inside. A lot of people don't know, but Tinder, it's a lot easier to carry it than it is to find it in the great outdoors. And yes, you can use birch bark, you can use uh, cattail fluff, and there are other flash tinders that are out there, but it's so much easier to just carry Tinder. It's not like it's heavy. No, it doesn't take up a lot of space either. Uh, if you don't want to carry Tinder, you can carry fish hooks in here. If you are worried about your health and maybe you have absolutely, absolutely vital medication, you can put that medication in here. So that covers that rule of three where it keeps your body uh, circulating blood, you know, very, very important to carry medication if you need it. Uh, yeah, I'm just super allergic to pollen, so I'll just throw some Zyrtec in there. Oh, a okay. few antihistamines, you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. um, so this is what's always in the right front pocket. It's the, the Daily Duo, basically the Victorinox Ranger and the Exotac Fire Rod. Uh, and that is always, always in the right front pocket, so I never have to go searching for it. Yeah. Now, if you're interested in any of these things, the Victorinox Ranger, the daily duo or the exotac fire rod all of these are available on blade hq and you'll find links in the description below what else you got kevin i can't see in the dark uh, i would love to meet the human who has evolved to be able to see in the dark they probably have giant bug eyes um i haven't met that person yet i don't have that capability so i think it's really important that you carry a flashlight and what's going on with this one? All right, so <laughs> so this is my flashlight. Uh, it's been modded from the uh, the one that I think we've got it kicking around oh, here. Yeah, we yeah. got it right here from the original. And this modification just involves a little bit of shrink tubing and a bungee cord. Uh, the reason why I have that on there, uh, one of my instructors, Tom Kyer from SIOC, he always says you want to be able to have the access to your flashlight, but you want to be able to pick things up without dropping your flashlight. And mm -hmm. with a lot of these lights that are either momentary on uh, or very small and dark in color, if you drop it in the dark, it's gone. So I want the ability to be able to retain that light. And what I like about this light is that it's rechargeable. Oh, look at that. So is mine rechargeable too? It sure is. Oh, look at that. That's the bee's knees. Flashlights are really, really important for EDC because we live in a world where we have sunrise and sunset. And part of our day is spent, or I should say part of our 24 hour day is spent in the dark. Until I can see in the dark, I want to carry a flashlight to find my way. Um, a flashlight for survival means that I can operate in the darkness. I can signal for help in the darkness. I can do something really menial like finding my keys in the dark, right? So I'm a big fan of carrying a good flashlight. And there's a lot of different types of flashlights that are out there. Uh, Surefire is another great company. This is more of a defensive light. Like I literally just used this one this past weekend teaching a low light class. And this one has multiple outputs, whereas the Streamlight is programmable. Right now I've got a program for a single output. Mm -hmm. This one I can toggle between low, medium, and high, but every time I hit this back button, this back button only gives me a high output, which in an emergency, if you were using this for defensive purposes, you don't want to toggle low, medium, high, you want to just go straight to high. So that's why uh, I really, really like that light. And I get it. People are going to say, wow, it's a $200 light. But if you look at yeah. the going rate right now of those CR123 batteries, you will probably in one year's time save 
the amount of money that it would take to refill this over and over and over with fresh batteries every single time. Yeah. So where does your flashlight live in your carry? So my flashlight is always going to be on my left hand side. And that's because my my blades are on my right hand side. If I'm carrying a pistol, the pistol's appendix. And I want to be able to grab that flashlight with the left. Uh, the reason why it's on the left hand side is because if this is my primary hand, my dominant hand, I'm going to be pointing or using a tool. I want to be able to illuminate with the the other strong side, the the offhand, so to speak. Okay. All right. So I imagine there's a lot of muscle memory that goes into producing a flashlight. You've probably drilled that a thousand times. <laughs> a good amount, yes. And, and you said that sometimes they accompany a handgun. Correct. So do you ever, like what tactical use does a light play other than just seeing? Oh boy, here we go. All right, so one of the uses with a flashlight is this concept of bleaching. The whole idea of bleaching is that you are momentarily stunning someone's vision where they can't track you. They're gonna see splotches. So the whole idea is if you have nothing else, you flash someone in the face with a light, right? You're, you're blinding them in the face and they can't tell if that light is coming near or far, but what usually follows is some Whoa. type of elbow or some type of punch or another tool. So the whole idea of a, of a flashlight, and you can thank me later for using this one <laughs> and not that one. Uh, <laughs> a flashlight is going to give you a tactical advantage in terms of going empty hands with someone or uh, just getting enough of concealment behind the brightness of a light, hiding behind that light. All right, well, I'm just gonna go change my pants real quick. Six hours later. So this is Blade HQ. What if mm -hmm. we stop for a minute and talk about knives? Okay. So you um, carried the, the Victorinox. What else you got? There are times when I'm gonna want a more substantial tool. The Victorinox is great for carving, and I've run whole survival classes where I just use the large blade and the small blade on the Victorinox, but mm -hmm. there are times where you're gonna want something more hand-filling, and that's when I use the Chris Reeves Sabenza. Uh, it's That's a, a flex, man. It's a solid knife too. <laughs> and, and it's a great company. I've really uh, enjoyed talking to Tim Reeve over the years and Ann Reeve is a total, total sweetheart. Um, I've been a big fan of Chris Reeve for a long time. And it's a knife that I will truly trust my life on uh, because it's so simple and it's really, really well made. So I'll use a, a larger folding knife that will lock open for tasks that go above and beyond what a Swiss Army knife can do. Yeah, well, I've been carrying the Spyderco Shaman a bit lately, and I I really like the idea of just a good, solid folder. My dad is a person who's hard to convince with knives, and he's always saying, you got to carry just a Swiss Army knife or a Leatherman. That'll be plenty, but I think you're right. You need a little more handle if you're going to be doing some more work with it. And to be fair, I work an office job at Blade HQ, but if I were a survival instructor, sign me up. I want a real folder. Dude, this is nice. Uh, I haven't handled this one yet, but I like how this micarta is actually rounded. There's like no hot spot. Mm -hmm. And I like how you can choke back on it. You can choke up. Um, I have not seen this knife yet. Really? So, you haven't? No, Why don't no. you take that one out for a ride for a little while? Don't tempt me. <laughs> okay. That's actually really, really nice. Well, I brought a fixed blade along as well. I yeah, what do you got? Protec SBR fixed blade. I really like this one. Look, it even has my name on it already. George. That's nice. Yeah. That's adorable. It is adorable. That's it's probably the worst thing I could say about another man's kit. It's like so insult. <laughs> it's so demeaning and insulting, but at the same like time. It's like calling somebody a sweet spirit. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, but I really like this one, and it has this like horizontal texturing. And you were talking to me about that a little earlier. It, like, my hands are kind of sweaty right now. Lights are bright. But if I'm stabbing, like if I'm going to go into wood or something, mm -hmm. I'm not going to slide up as easy. As yeah, we call it riding the blade, which <laughs> is not as exciting and fun sounding. Um, <laughs> and riding the blade will result in you cutting the inside of the palm of your hand. So not a good thing. Um, but Especially even if, if you're surviving. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, more more wounds, blood should be in the body. Tis but a scratch. But it's not even just for, for the thrusting aspect. Like many times when you're holding it in one of these grips where the edge is oriented 90 degrees one way or the other, it gives you a little something else to, to hold on to. So, I mean, it does lock it into your hand nicely. Um, this is a great, great little blade. Yeah, I like it a lot. I have a dream that one day I can have a black one with a, a black blade, green handle, magna cut steel. Maybe one day. Magna cut's hard to come by right now. Anyway, knives. Mm. I love them. They're good for you. Good for your soul. The, the knives that I carry, they fall into this principle in EDC called PACE planning, right? And we talk about this at Fieldcraft. PACE is an acronym that stands for Primary, Alternate, Contingency, and Emergency. My primary knife, 
might be my Swiss Army knife, or maybe my primary knife is my fixed blade. My alternate knife might be my folder. My contingency knife, the one that if I lose the first two, I have a backup, could even be a razor blade in my pocket, right, in my wallet. Okay. The emergency knife could be a broken piece of glass. It could be a tin can that I, I break the lid off and I sharpen it. So you want to have redundant layers of gear. Uh, for your flashlight, you might say, well, that's only one way to see in the dark, but there are other things that you can carry that can illuminate your way, like a lighter. Um, so pace planning is very, very important when it comes to EDC from my perspective. Again, there are people out there that may not have the budget or maybe they don't have the capacity in their apparel that they wear to carry redundant layers, but that's why you carry a daily bag. That's why you might put some of these items in your car every single day. You want to make sure that you have these redundant layers just in case something happens to your primary. All right. And then you also put on the list pocket organizers. And I, I loaded this thing up in what I thought could be a nice little mm -hmm. pocket organizing thing. And I'm thinking, who in the world would put this in their pocket? That thing's a brick. <laughs> Yeah, and this this one's even more of a brick. This is like a cinder block. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's basically the same one, and I don't carry this in my pocket. I carry this in my backpack. And instead of having all of these different items kind of loose and you know jingling around in the bottom of the bag, I know that if I reach in here, I have a multi-tool, I have a pen. I know that I have additional contents that are organized. And this is the way to go. This is the truth when it comes to staying organized is to use a smaller container inside of a larger one. This uh, is also made by Yellow Birch Outfitters that makes, mm -hmm. you know, these daily duos. Um, and there may the pocket pro, by the way. And, and there may there may come a time where you're wearing cargo pants or you might have a jacket that has additional uh, large pockets or maybe you're traveling and you just want to have a decent kit with you that covers some of the, the foundations of, of survival. This one, the contents of, that are inside of here reflect very much so what Victorinox used to sell on their SOS kit. I think they still sell that, mm -hmm. um, but a lot of those items are in here, and this is what I travel with. So another thing you mentioned is lighters. Yes. And I, I my initial question, well, I don't carry a lighter every day. Maybe I should. You might convince me here. But I always thought everybody's just going to ask, do you have a light? Now I can say yes. So why, why am I carrying a lighter? I'll say this, the Bic lighter gives you 1,000 one second fires. If it's carried in this container, which is the Exotac fire sleeve, really cool thing about this is it has a split tab on the back. And if you put that tab up over the gas, now you can turn the gas on and you have a constant on feature, which that was always a critique of the Bic lighters is that it's gonna go out. It's gonna go out if you let go. Well, Exotac fixed that. Um, yeah, was, and even when you travel, you can carry just the case and replenish the lighter when you get somewhere. So if they give you a hard time about traveling with a lighter, you can always just carry the case. You can put a good lanyard on it so it stays tied down to your kit so you don't lose it. Mm -hmm. um, really, you can't go wrong with one of these. And fire is so important in survival. It makes sense that you carry a good lighter. Um, this is the one that I carry. Exotac hasn't come out with a fire sleeve for the mini Bic, but in the summertime, it makes sense to carry smaller items since we're, you know, everything gets so warm in your pockets. All right. So last, let's talk about these notebooks. You mentioned mm -hmm. right in the rain notebooks. Yeah. So there are a couple items that you might want to just have that are maybe not necessary to have, but they're nice to have. For someone who teaches a lot of land navigation, we use these all the time to track pace count. We use these all the time to write down coordinates. Distance and direction are the two cardinal uh, items that you need to have when you're doing a route card. So these come in very, very handy. And as the name implies, it's water resistant. So when you're putting it in your pocket or you've got it in your gear and it does happen to get sweaty or end up in the drink, you can still write on it. Yeah, I've seen people writing underwater with these things. Mm. I have to use the right pen for that. Though. Or a pencil. Or a pencil. Be like the Russians. That's right. Don't engineer a fancy pen. Just use a pencil. <laughs> <gasps> That's a lot of gear. That's a pretty good amount of gear. That's what you carry every day? Every single day. And it's realistic. I challenge anyone to find me in public or at Blade Show or wherever and say, do you really have that Swiss Army knife in your pocket? And I will. Um, my Between gear on that leather says it all. Yeah. You know, my, my gear, it, it doesn't look like everyone else's because it's actually used. Um, mm -hmm. and 
there are character marks to everything that I, I have here. I can tell you why it has that scratch on it, why I dropped it here, when I dropped it there, you know? Mm -hmm. So as a survival instructor, a guy who's made his living off of teaching skills and promoting the right gear, uh, educating, equipping, and empowering people, that's how I live, that's how I'm gonna carry my stuff. Well, I really like that. I think if everyone in the world carried a kit like this one, There'd be a lot less dire emergencies out there. Seriously, and Chris Reeve would be a multi-millionaire because everyone would have a Sabenza. <laughs> I think Chris Reeve's already a multi-millionaire. Yeah, I've seen his facility. It's pretty yeah. nice. Uh, you're just lucky you got a Sabenza. We can't keep him in stock. Yeah, and and this was a amazing thing. Uh, I received a Sabenza that was actually born on my actual birthday. Yeah. It's a flex. No one yeah. does that. That's, that's <laughs> tricky. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I will never let that one go. If I lose it, I will probably cry. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Get back in there, Tia. I would too. All right, well, this is a really fun ev everyday carry loadout, and it's a little bit different than a lot of the stuff we've seen around. And with the exception of this guy and this guy when it's not in stock, all of this is available at Blade HQ. So check the links in the description and build yourself a real everyday carry, and then train with it. Carry it every single day. Learn how to use it. You'll be a better person for it. Yeah, the life that you may save may be your own. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, let's go get more tacos. I'm in. All right. We'll see you all in the next one.